People aiming to achieve FIRE often mention the 4% rule, that is, once you reach your target portfolio value, you can start to withdraw 4% of that value every year, and that will sustain you throughout retirement. You may also have heard a variation of this, whereby they work backwards from your annual target income. For example, if you're aiming to leave off £40,000 a year when you retire, then your target portfolio value would be 25 times that, which in this case works out to be £1 million. In a nutshell, this is the 4% rule. But where did this rule come from? In 1998, three professors from the University of Trinity in Texas published a paper where they set out to solve a problem many retirees ask themselves. How much should I withdraw? Now, it seems like a simple question, but your withdrawal rate has a big impact on how quickly you deplete your savings or pensions. Laying on top of that the impact of economic conditions on the value of your portfolio and you need to be very careful with your withdrawals. Their study became known as the Trinity Study, a summarized version of which you can see here. And I've also left the link in the description in case you wanted to read it. The authors were looking at scenarios whereby individuals had different portfolio mixes and different withdrawal rates at different time horizons. So in terms of the portfolio mix, they analyzed portfolios with the following compositions, 100% stocks, 75% stocks and 25% bonds, 50% stocks and 50% bonds, 25% stocks and 75% bonds, and finally 100% bonds. What they found out was that with a 100% bond portfolio, you're worst off, which may seem counterintuitive at first because bonds are one of the safest asset classes you could invest in. But the returns are simply not large enough. Nevertheless, a notable finding was that the 4% results in a 100% success rate over all time horizons. And for reference, the time horizons I mentioned earlier, they were talking about 15 years, 20 years, 25 years and 30 years of retirement funding. Note that the historic data used here ranges from 1926 to 1995. The authors also looked at the effect on inflation. Remember, if you're withdrawing a fixed sum of money over time, this value will be worth less as cost of living rises. So you would probably want to withdraw a little more every year to sustain the same standard of living. And here's where things start to change a little. There is no longer a 100% success rate across the board, but instead in the 100% stock scenario with a 4% withdrawal rate over 30 years results in a 95% success rate. Remember again, success rate means they don't run out of money. And if you look at the 100% bond scenario, well actually don't. Look away now because the results are scary. Only 20% of cases were successful and that means an 80% failure rate. Yeah, so I wouldn't suggest you put all your money into bonds, right? But anyway, the best allocation they found was 75% stocks and 25% bonds. And at a 4% withdrawal rate, the success rate was 98%. So for comparison, the 100% stock scenario returned 95%, the 75% stock and 25% bond returned 98%, so that's 3% more. Not a massive deal, but you'll take it. One other aspect of retirement they looked at is the terminal value of the portfolios. Here by terminal value, we mean the end value. So if you recall, success is determined as not running out of money. But not running out of money means that at the end of the period, you could have $1 or $1,000. So clearly these represent very different situations. As the authors point out, someone may want to leave some money at the end of their life to maybe their kids or grandkids, etc. On the other hand, some people may want to enjoy every cent of their wealth, in which case they would need to increase their withdrawal rates so that they don't end up with lots of wealth left over. So, with a 4% rule and a 75% and 25% stock bonds allocation, and an initial investment of $1,000, you would end up on average with $2,964 after 15 years, $4,239 after 20 years, 
and $6,031 after 25 years. And if you go further than that, that is over 30 years, you'll get $9,031. Over the same time horizons, the minimum value of the portfolio dropped down to was $493, $536, $785, and $1,497. And recall again, that's with an initial investment of $1,000, meaning those can be in easily interpreted as percentage instead. So in the worst case scenario, under the 4% rule, you'd have 49% of your money left after 15 years, 53% after 20 years, 79% after 25 years, and 150% after 30 years. So let's recap and summarize their findings and it'll be clear why they came to the 4% conclusion. From their study, we've seen that at a 4% withdrawal rate, there is absolutely no scenarios where they run out of money. When inflation is added to the mix, then you have to be careful, particularly as you start to take in a lot of bonds in your portfolio mix. Next, they showed how at 4%, you'd still end up with at least half of your money towards the end of the retirement period. Therefore, it's easy to see why they came to this conclusion. However, there's been a lot of resistance to the 4% rule. Graham Stephan famously posted a video entitled, Stop Following the 4% Rule. Is there really some merit to this and is there an alternative to the 4% rule? We'll talk about this next time. And to make sure you don't miss my next video, click on the like button and subscribe, that way YouTube will fine tune your recommendation. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.